Hi friends. Pyoderma gangrenosum is an uncommon inflammatory and ulcerative skin disorder characterized by the accumulation of neutrophils in the skin. The most common presentation of pyoderma gangrenosum is the rapid development of one or more painful purulent ulcer with undermined borders on sites of normal or traumatized skin. This video describes all the treatment options available for management of pyoderma gangrenosum. Before starting, if you learn something or if you find information provided in this video as helpful, please motivate us by subscribing, liking and sharing this video. The treatment options for management of pyoderma gangrenosum can be divided in four groups, based on severity of the disease. These four categories are First is, first line therapy. Second is second line and adjunctive therapies. The third is treatment of refractory disease. And fourth is other therapies. First line therapies are Wound management including local care and surgical treatment. For limited disease, local corticosteroids and local calcineurin inhibitors. And For more extensive or rapidly progressing disease, systemic glucocorticoids and systemic cyclosporin. Second line and adjunctive therapies are Infliximab Other biologic TNF-alpha inhibitors conventional immunosuppressants, dapsone, and minocycline. Treatment of refractory disease includes intravenous immune globulin and alkylating agent, and multiple other interventions have been reported to be effective in individual patients. Before going to treatment options, I would like to mention some general considerations which are important for management of pyoderma gangrenosum. These general considerations are 1. The careful exclusion of other disorders that may cause cutaneous ulceration is an important first step in the management of lesions that appear consistent with pyoderma gangrenosum. This is of particular importance since certain therapies utilized for pyoderma gangrenosum can be ineffective or harmful in other diseases. Two. Pyoderma gangrenosum frequently occurs in association with other medical disorders, most commonly inflammatory bowel disease, hematologic malignancy, and arthritis. Although the course of the disease does not always parallel pyoderma gangrenosum, treatment of the associated disorder sometimes results in improvement in pyoderma gangrenosum. Please check my videos on Crohn's disease, rheumatoid arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, by clicking on i button on the top right corner of this video. 3. Treatment is usually a combination of topical and or systemic therapies that suppress the inflammatory process and wound care measures that creates the environment for wound healing. 4. Pathergy can occur with pyoderma gangrenosum. Pathergy is exacerbation of lesions at sites of trauma, hence, it is important to be careful while wound care and surgical treatment, to prevent pathergy. 5. Although initial signs of improvement may be seen within days of the start of treatment, weeks to months are often required to achieve complete ulcer healing. Prolonged treatment is necessary for some patients. 6. Once complete healing of lesions has occurred, treatment cessation can be attempted. Therapy should be gradually tapered and stopped over the course of several months rather than abruptly discontinued. 7. Pain management, ulcers of pyoderma gangrenosum are often associated with significant pain. Pain may improve during treatment, but some patients require the use of narcotic agents to manage discomfort. Consultation with a pain management specialist may be beneficial. 8. Prevention, there are no specific measures that have been shown to prevent the initial development of pyoderma gangrenosum. 9. In patients with an existing diagnosis, avoidance of trauma may help to reduce the development of new lesions. If patients with pyoderma gangrenosum require surgery for other indications, 
wound closure with subcuticular stitches and close postoperative follow-up with a dermatologist is suggested. First Line Therapy Wound Care Measures Wound care measures in pyoderma gangrenosum are intended to optimize the environment for wound healing. Wound dressings that maintain a moist wound environment are preferred. Due to the potential for pathergy, exacerbation of pyoderma gangrenosum at sites of tissue injury, unnecessary trauma should be avoided. Use of zinc oxide paste or petrolatum may help to prevent skin breakdown at the wound edge. Patients should be treated appropriately with antibiotics if infection occurs. Surgery The role of surgery is controversial in pyoderma gangrenosum due to the possibility of the induction of pathergy. Surgical procedures should be avoided in most cases. Surgery may be necessary in select cases, such as those in which tissue necrosis presents a risk for infection or in which exposure of vital tissues such as tendons or ligaments is present. Limited disease Limited disease is pyoderma gangrenosum limited to a few superficial ulcers or a solitary plaque of vegetative pyoderma gangrenosum. Local interventions such as local corticosteroid and local calcineurin inhibitors can be used as initial therapy in patients with mild, localized pyoderma gangrenosum due to the relatively low risk of serious adverse effects. Local corticosteroids High potency or superpotent topical corticosteroids, such as clobetazole propionate, can be used once or twice daily. Some studies also suggest treatment with intralesional steroid injections such as triamcinolone. But there is risk of pathergy with intralesional injections. Cutaneous atrophy is one of the most common adverse effects of topical and intralesional corticosteroid therapy. Local calcineurin inhibitors. Topical tacrolimus 0.1% ointment once to twice daily can be used. Improvement may be evident within the first few days to weeks of treatment. However, complete healing of an ulcer may take several weeks to a few months. Treatment is usually well tolerated, occasionally, patients experience mild burning sensations at the site of application. A case report documented improvement with Pemacrolimus 1% cream, and improvement with topical or intralesional cyclosporin has been described in a few patients. More extensive or rapidly progressing disease. Pyoderma gangrenosum not limited to a few superficial ulcers or a solitary plaque of vegetative pyoderma gangrenosum is more extensive disease. And this can not be managed with local therapy alone and systemic treatment is used as a first-line intervention for more extensive or rapidly progressing disease. Systemic agents are also appropriate for patients with mild pyoderma gangrenosum that fails to improve with local therapy. Topical or intralesional corticosteroids and topical tacrolimus are often used as adjuncts to systemic therapy. The systemic therapies utilized in pyoderma gangrenosum are immunosuppressive and immunomodulatory agents that calm the inflammatory process to allow for wound healing. Systemic glucocorticoids Systemic glucocorticoids such as oral prednisone, 0.5 to 1.5 mg per kg per day with a maximum dose of 60 mg of prednisone per day, or intravenous pulse corticosteroids such as methylprednisolone, 1 g per day for 1 to 5 days, often induce a rapid response and are typically used as initial therapy. As long-term therapy with systemic glucocorticoids is associated with significant adverse effects, glucocorticoids are tapered once disease progression has stopped and clear signs of improvement are noted. Tapering glucocorticoids too rapidly may precipitate disease flares, hence gradual tapering over weeks is required. Steroids can be tapered and discontinued within 4 to 10 weeks with close monitoring for continued improvement. Glucocorticoid sparing agent, such as mycophenolate mofetil, cyclosporin, azathioprine, or infliximab, can be added to maintain improvement during and after tapering. To know more regarding side effects of steroids, 
please check my video on side effects of steroids, by clicking on I button on the top right corner of this video. Systemic Cyclosporin In patients who cannot tolerate or fail to respond to systemic glucocorticoids, treatment with systemic cyclosporin 4 to 5 mg per kg and subsequently taper as tolerated can be attempted. Cyclosporin therapy can lead to unfavorable side effects, such as renal toxicity and hypertension. Limiting cyclosporin treatment to less than one year is suggested. Second line and adjunctive therapies. Infliximab. Infliximab is a chimeric antibody against tumor necrosis factor, TNF, alpha. It can be used to reduce inflammation in pyoderma gangrenosum. It is used in dose of 5 mg per kg at weeks 0, 2, and 6, followed by infusions every 6 to 8 weeks. Potential adverse effects of infliximab include infusion reactions, infections, demyelinating disease, and heart failure. The side effects of TNF-alpha inhibitors are discussed in greater detail in my video on otolimumab. Please click on I button on the top right corner of this video to learn more about side effects of otolimumab. The requirement for infusion and the high cost of the drug make infliximab treatment less favorable for some patients. Other Biologic TNF-alpha Inhibitors In addition to infliximab, other biologic TNF-alpha inhibitors such as otolimumab, 40 mg weekly, 40 mg twice monthly, and other regimens, or Atenercept, 25 to 50 mg twice weekly, may be beneficial in pyoderma gangrenosum. Particularly when pyoderma gangrenosum is associated with other autoimmune disease such as inflammatory bowel disease or rheumatoid arthritis. Please check my videos on Crohn's disease, rheumatoid arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, by clicking on I button on the top right corner of this video. Conventional Immunosuppressants Immunosuppressive agents such as mycophenolate mofetil, 2 to 3 gm per day, methotrexate, 10 to 30 mg per week, and azathioprine, 100 to 300 mg per day, have been utilized for the treatment of pyoderma gangrenosum. The onset of action of these drugs is slower than for systemic glucocorticoids and cyclosporin. These agents are generally considered to be most beneficial when used as adjunctive or glucocorticoid sparing agents, rather than as monotherapy. Adverse effects of these agents are also a concern. Dapsone Dapsone can be administered as monotherapy or as a glucocorticoid sparing agent. It is generally well tolerated so it is used prior to aggressive immunosuppressive therapies in patients with mild disease. However, dapsone therapy should be avoided in patients with glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase G6PD, deficiency due to an elevated risk for drug-induced hemolytic anemia in this population. Minocycline Minocycline 100 mg twice daily can be administered as monotherapy or as a glucocorticoid sparing agent. Minocycline should not be administered to children under the age of 9 years due to adverse effects on tooth development. Treatment of refractory disease Intravenous immune globulin IVIG and the alkylating agents cyclophosphamide and chlorambucil are options for patients with severe pyoderma gangrenosum that is refractory to first and second line agents. The high cost of IVIG and the requirement for intravenous infusion limits its routine use. The potential for severe adverse effects limits the use of alkylating agents. Other therapies Multiple other interventions have been reported to be effective in individual patients. Examples of topical agents include sodium chromoglycate, nicotine, benzoyl peroxide, 5-aminosalicylic acid, nitrogen mustard, and platelet-derived growth factor. Additional systemic agents that may be beneficial to patients include clofazamine, colchicine, doxycycline, interferon alpha, melphalan, mercaptopurine, 
metronidazole, potassium iodide, sulfasalazine, tacrolimus, thalidomide, ustekinumab, canakinumab, tofacetinib. Apheresis of leukocytes and plasmapheresis have also been used for treatment. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe for more such videos.